John, I just love the battles between atheists and theists. I, I just relish it because it exposes arguments on both sides that I take seriously. Now, one of the arguments that theists make against atheists is that atheism itself is, is a new faith, is a faith position just like atheism, and is not the default position. And really, it's a question of who has the burden of proof. I'd like theists to be right, but I don't know if I agree with that position. So what can you say about atheism? Is it a new faith? I don't believe so, no. Atheism is a claim. It is a negative claim, uh, the claim that there is no God, where God is understood in personal terms. And of course, the divine ultimate reality doesn't have to be understood in personal terms. I distinguish between theism and ultimism, which is the much broader notion of some uh, reality that is divine in its fundamental characteristics. So the atheist is somebody who's making a very specific claim, a negative claim that there is no God of this kind, this the personal traditional God. personal God, right? And by being a negative claim, I mean, that's important when you think about faith. Faith, the claims people make when they have faith tend to be positive claims uh, about the world. Well, you might say atheism is still a metaphysical claim, a claim about the nature of reality. It has something to do with the nature of reality. Well, so it does, but not just any metaphysical claim is uh, a faith claim or a religious claim, okay? So to, to be religious, typically, you know, you're, you're going to have a claim that is metaphysical, but it doesn't work the other way around. It's not as though every metaphysical claim is religious. Um, now, if we distinguish between atheism and naturalism, which isn't done nearly enough, um, then we might be able to take the discussion further, because naturalism is a positive claim about, about the world. It says that the world is a single unified system of natural law discoverable at least in principle, by science. And that positive claim is sometimes held in a way that, uh, that might make uh, one think of faith, at least um, if you're thinking of faith in, in, in the way that its critics often do, as being unquestioned, perhaps a little inflexible, mm -hmm. perhaps held in the absence of arguments. <laughs> I mean, the atheists have arguments. I have arguments. I'm an atheist, and I make the negative claim that there is no personal God, and I can back it up. And that's how I would say, or at least part of how what I'm doing distinguishes my position from anything having to do with faith. But naturalism, uh, it's a little harder to provide solid arguments for naturalism. And naturalism is a positive claim. Um, and it's sometimes held to um, in ways that remind one of faith. So, so you might have a little more traction with, with uh, the argument if you're applying it to naturalism than to atheism. So you are an atheist, mm. but are you a naturalist? No, I'm not. Atheism does not entail naturalism. I mean, it's, it's a contingent fact about our culture that many, many atheists are also naturalists. And that's because of how... The assumption is that they're almost synonymous. It's yeah, where, exactly. When there are radically People treat different them kinds of claims. People synonymous, but they're not at all. I mean, there are, even within extant religions like Buddhism, you have... Uh, religious people, recognizably religious people who are atheists, who don't believe in a personal God, but who have some other understanding of a divine reality, which they accept, and which rules out naturalism. Uh, and, and my reason for not being a naturalist is, is different from that. It's not as though I hold to one of those alternative forms of traditional religion, but I'm a religious skeptic at the widest level. Okay? So I'm, a, I'm an atheist when you're thinking only about the traditional idea of God, a disbeliever there. But if you move it all the way out to the broader idea of ultimism, there being some divine reality, I'm going to say, no, I'm just a skeptic about that. And by being a skeptic about that, I have to be a skeptic about naturalism. Because naturalism entails that there is no such ultimate divine reality. Right. Uh, so that's why I'm not a naturalist, even though I am an atheist. So how would you define your position as a, a, uh, a full-blown skeptic? A religious skeptic, an evolutionary, every, mm. a real skeptic in the great sense of the term, from the more traditional term of agnostic. The traditional term agnostic is used with reference again to theism, specifically. It's more Our, limited. Claim. Yeah, it is more limited. Our frame of reference has, has been somewhat limited. It's mm -hmm. been focused entirely on the religious view that's been most influential in our culture, in Western culture, and that's the idea of a personal God. And so the agnostic is one who is in doubt about whether there is a personal God. And so you've got the theist over here who believes that there is, the atheist over here who denies that there is, and the agnostic in the middle not being sure. And you're not an agnostic. I'm not an agnostic. I am I'm a full-blown atheist. Full-blown atheist. 
But if you take the whole thing out, as I think we should, to the broader level of whether there's any divine reality, there I'm only a skeptic. Because the I, arguments I, I give for, the, for, for atheism don't, don't get a grip on that broader, more general mm, mm. idea. Yeah, I, I would use a different term in broadening it out than divine. Uh, mm. I would use... I would use a sort of a negative term against naturalism. I would say anything that is non-natural, because divine has its own connotations yeah, in yeah. today's world. Well, the non-natural isn't immediately divine or religious. Right. Okay, you could have a non-natural reality that's not religious at all. Right. How do you define whether it's religious? Well, I do so in terms of my concept of ultimism, which says that uh, religion is is structured by its adherence implicitly or explicitly to this very general claim that there is a reality that is metaphysically ultimate, that is ultimate in the nature of things, axiologically ultimate. Well, values. In value, it's unsurpassably valuable. And uh, also uh, soteriologically ultimate, that is, it's the source potentially of our deepest ultimate good. Now, you could have a reality that's non-natural, but that doesn't satisfy all those right. conditions. And I would say that's even a broader concept, because I, mm. I would think that there's uh, the possibility that just on the metaphysical claim, mm -hmm. there could be something non-natural, something immaterial, mm -hmm. a syn synonymous word, the way I'm using it, but that has no axiological yeah. or value right. claim on reality, or you could right? you could have no a, connection mm, with us. You could have a finite personal God, for example. You could have... Uh, a supernatural reality. Um, sometimes the traditional theistic God who's supposed to be perfect is, is sort of downgraded to, to some such finite <laughs> supernatural being by, by, by certain atheistic naturalists um, who don't like the idea of God. Um, you know, the idea of God, the traditional theistic idea of God is still a religious idea, and so it has to be one that embraces ultimism. But it, it gives to ultimism a particular shape. Mm -hmm. or you put altering the metaphor, you could say it gives ultimism a face. Um, <laughs> quite literally. Right, quite literally. Um, and that's what atheists deny, and to bring it around to uh, where we started. Uh, by denying that, they, they don't have to affirm naturalism. Um, they might, in fact, uh, be skeptical about that, as I am. And that's not uh, a position of, of faith.